Let's see now. All right. Shalom. This is Wyndham to some. This is Ras Alonso to Ferri. Anna is reporting for the Lion of Judah Society, most likely on Rastafari Fellowship, whether it be one or two on YouTube. Uh, today's date is it, it's um, Monday, July 25th, 2016. It's 8.48 p.m. And, uh, all right, we'd like to bring forth this, this um, at first it was funny. I mean, it is really funny. And um, perhaps, We'll have um, pictures, I guess, some somehow included in this, and it will begin with um, maybe a picture, the pictures of I, um, a pet dog. His name is Slayer, which is well the motivation uh, that led us to to see what we saw, and perhaps some of us will be able to see some some aspects of, of truth that are very much necessary to recognize and thus to to overstand and thence um, we can overcome so and then um, also uh, there'll be a picture of the which we will be uh, referring to uh, specifically concerning his majesty um, he since he is in some kind of like office um, he's throwing up his hand signs, you know, representing. And then you see a little chihuahua, very little chihuahua. But, you know, there's many pictures where you can see a little chihuahua uh, next to his majesty, Ali Selassie first. But this one, this picture in particular, it just kind of reminded me of my own dog. And um, and I thought it was really funny. Because yeah, first thing that came to mind, uh, aside from my dog, is Khaled. And then my dog, you know, his his experience or my experience with him is very much Khaled and he too is a very small chihuahua but but very different and so now let us bring forth um uh, the beginning to the story there's many things that we could say about our our pet dog Slayer but for the sake of um keeping context we'll just tell a brief story as to how we came about to see what we saw in the picture. Now, when I and I barely, barely purchased him, because I actually purchased him, um, me and, and a girlfriend at a time. So now, if I'm not mistaken, I think it was around 2006, and Slayer is still very much alive, although I haven't seen him for a while, um, since I moved up from Southern California to Northern California. And, uh, but, you know, from 2006, and he, he don't seem to be getting any older. As a matter of fact, it seems like like that little dog just keeps going. Nonetheless, testifies to some of what um, we'll bring forth. Now, when he was very, very small, and he's still small, but um, that's to, that's to rec recognize that he was still even smaller. We went to a veterinarian office, and... Um, uh, for some reason, I guess shots or something like that, maybe to get shots. I can't, yeah, to get his, um, you know, his vaccinations or whatever it is that they call it. And um, so we're inside of the office already, and I can hear the, the veterinarian, you know, walking down the hallway, and he's reading his paperwork. I don't see this, but, I mean, uh, I, I conclude this on the basis of him calling out his name as if he was um, checking up his paperwork, maybe perhaps um, that which he had scheduled an appointment um, right at that time. So he's, the doctor is walking through the aisle, and I can hear him kind of like talking to himself like in a, in a loud voice, and he's saying like, oh boy, because he read Slayer. He said, Slayer, like what's next? Okay, Slayer, oh boy, what do we have here? And it's not that he was being sarcastic or funny about it, because he had not yet seen um, who Slayer actually was. So. So I guess he's had probably maybe, I don't know, um, instances in where he has to deal with really big dogs, maybe fierce dogs, I don't know. And so he's like, oh boy, he read the name Slayer and he figured, well, well let's see what, what we're up against this time. And he walks into the into the, his little office and he starts laughing. He's all like, so this is Slayer, ha 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 ha, you know, like, and here I am thinking that, that, that well, 
seems like uh, we're going to have one of those days. And, you know, it was all laughing games until two nurses extra for support and help and Slayer having his mouth um, tied up with one of those, um, I guess, uh, what you're not supposed to put on, on your mules, on your um, oxen's um, mouth to keep them from eating from the field that they're working. Some of those like um, masks, like face masks, to prevent a dog from, from opening his mouth. So after a couple of, of um, ner not nurse assistants, I don't know what they call them, veterinarian assistants, and his mouth, you know, um, shut, tied, tied shut with one of those strap apparatuses, I don't know what they call them. It got to the point where, where the veterinarian was like, listen, um, why don't you and, and your girlfriend, why don't you try to, try to handle this? And I'm not trying to say that, that they were physically like not capable of sustaining the dog or keeping the dog still in order to get the job done. I mean, that's not what I'm trying to say, but it, it um, required it, um, so much strength that it became, it became um, a risk. And we got to consider that they're running a, or operating a business and therefore they cannot put themselves in a position where, where they're kind of playing with the, they're on the borderline of perhaps hurting the dog because he's, he doesn't stop for being a very small um, chihuahua. And so that was a request. Can, you know what? Like it's too much. We can't really um, contain him. We can't handle him. Why don't you and your girlfriend do something about it? We're not gonna take any risk with this. And so, you know, it's it's a small it's a small dog, but very fierce, very very strong, very powerful. Now, what does this have to do with with Aina as Rasta Ferry and Aina growth and Ethiopia's progress? our lives and Ethiopia's progress. Well, Caleb came to mind because Caleb, you know, it, it could be interpreted as, as dog. So now we're going to take a second to read um, an email that we sent from Wyndham Yasun after receiving I and I first an email. And so, you know, we answered the email that, or the, you know, we answered to his communication and then we went forward and kind of just said like, oh yeah, and by the way, check this out, you know, I was thinking, and I'm not going to read the, like the fullness of the email, it's no one's um, business, I mean, but um, just the part where I speak on, on the matter at hand, so this is what I say, oh boy, uh, I just closed it, give I one second, I closed it accidentally, All right, so it says, Yo, Wyndham, um, I was reminded of my dog Slayer, a small chihuahua, uh, through this picture. And I thought, you know, question mark, I thought to myself, whoever said Caleb was a mighty warrior of great stature? That's a question. So I saw little Caleb rebuking the big boys, the, the big boys, the ones sent to tour the land, saying nonsense. Make I and I, or make we go up at once. And in this picture, Caleb is like, or Caleb's like, and, and it's the picture that I and I is referring to, where His Majesty's in the office, you know, throwing his hand signs, and then you can see his, his dog. So, so this is what I, what I was referring to. And in this picture, Caleb's like, yo, Ja, we made it. We made it to the land, you know? And so, it's, it's, it's something to meditate upon. I mean, I thought it was hilarious when I laughed. I mean, I usually don't laugh out loud and stuff like that, but but because of my experience, because of, you know, it just kind of it just kind of was um, kind of extra special, I guess. But it was really fun. And there's something about that picture. Like I said, I've seen a lot of pictures where you can see dogs with his majesty, but this one is like, he looks extra tiny next to his majesty. He looks at big office, you know, people in the background handling business and his majesty you know like um, just posted um, representing you know throwing his hand signs so now let, let's go into just just um for for um uh posterity sake we could say not just for like um knowledge sake so you know blue letter bible dictionary this is what we get from from um typing into the search 
bar engine thing, uh, Kalip, it, it, you know, the first reference would be um, Kaleb, which is the H3612, which is, um, you know, interpreted as dog. It's got two immediate, you know, um, uh, def not definitions, but um, I guess uh, two instances to which we're given some some information as to the application of the name Caleb or, or Caleb. So it says, A, the godly son of Jephunneh and faithful spy who reported the promised land favorable or favorably and urged its capture. Now B, it says son of Hezron and grandson of Fares and great grandson of Judah and the father of Hur, which is very significant, and grand and grandfather of Caleb the spy. Now, uh, just a little bit on the on the actual signification and the basis for the interpretation, as as they have chosen it to be, would be a dog, uh, perhaps from the sense of barking, a barker. Um, the nature of, uh, perhaps even um, in a, in a second sense, um, based on the nature of a person persecuting one's enemies but I would like to say because that, that's kind of like um, looking at looking at it at a negative not because it's wrong but wrong point of view rather we should be focused in, in noticing how or not because chasing after the enemy but perhaps maybe a better way to look at things is because of their will to satisfy their master and their will their ability to let everything go regardless of what how they've been treated or what they have to put up in relation or regards to their master and how they always seem to turn the other cheek and just just bliss in in obtaining your attention just wanting to be there for you just wanting you to notice them uh, you know without any consideration as to how good or how bad things might be how much food or how less or how much food they don't have or how you treat them or how you don't treat them just always happy to see their master and trying to trying to go after them instead of you know like kind of uh, basing our focus on our, our signification on on the pursuit of the enemy rather the pursuit of of satisfying his um his owner so now you know it could also be interpreted as fierce and a cruel man man fierce and cruel men now this also is double-sided. We could be fierce and cruel, but I don't care because I'm not here to make friends and I'm not here to satisfy the deadly curiosities or the deadly temptations or the evil ways of the world. I really don't care. I'm not even here to satisfy the BS that the Rasta men, which are not Rastafari at all, have to say. I'm not here to make friends. I don't even care if the ones who communicate with I personally are offended or are not in agreement with what I know to be true. So that's to be fierce and cruel. Some might say, oh, you're, that's too much. You take it way too seriously. Thank you. Thank you very much for noticing. That's a blessing. The more... And it's not to say I got enemies, but... reverence not because of I but because job word will stand doctrinally I'm not here to pretend based on my my um, uh, behavior and that I'm not here based on my religious practices to exalt myself I exalt myself in that I am true and faithful in I and I testimony. The words that I speak are firm, firmly established on that which is true, has been, is, and ever will be. On that basis, reverence. When he's around, you know, just don't talk about religion, don't talk about God, don't talk about Christ, definitely don't talk about Rastafari, don't just, you know, just kind of wave, say hi, what's up, oh hey, how's it going, oh yeah, we're doing okay, and, and get out of there, you don't want, you don't want to talk to that person, 
but not because there's a hatred because the enmity has been has been overcome in the sense that I fight not against flesh and so there's no real there's nothing to to hold on to like as a basis or as a foundation to actually even pronounce any kind of enmity against this one but there's a disconnect because he is a it is not of this world and so that's what we mean by reverence they reverence that the words that we speak are true because that is our true and faithful witness so now that is a blessing when when ones w would call I fierce and cruel yes but not for wickedness sake but rather fierce and cruel in I and I attempt to, su to be sustained as we are and sustain that which is right and correct which is just and which is the cause for which we've been called unclean and despised even 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 that to the world you know it being true to the most high is to be unclean and despised but I really don't care and we as Rastafari really should not care so the sooner the true and faithful design or outline firmly with no kind of um, with no softness what it is that we testify to the sooner we are made separate it's the mouth that doesn't speak that causes corruption within truth because then others can misrepresent what you are supposed to represent but you dare not bark concerning the matter you're not a barker you're not a caleb you're not a, you're not at after the after seeking satisfaction or after pleasing I and I master so everything ties in you know what is right is right and what is true must be spoken that way there will be no confusion as to what a, a just a weed smoker like Wendem Yadam just put out a video concerning that what a weed smoker is and what the difference is from him and a Rastafari and what a just what a what a person with dreadlocks is and the difference between them and a Rastafari what a so-called Rasta which is an imposter which is not in the fullness is and how it is not a Rastafari what a person that likes reggae music is and how it is nothing or nothing alike what a true Rastafari is and so until we define clearly what it is that we are then until then we will be recognized as such as a matter of fact this has everything to do with Balam and Balak you know how could there be any confusion lest the people that are called rightly divide the word of truth and, and represent um, truthfully barking at any kind of like um, even the most minute or smallest transgression of the very of the very truth that we've been that we've been handed or given granted the very faith that we are to uphold you know so we we too have to be colleagues in many respects so let's see I kind of want to go Balam Balam see fear of barking is to satisfy the world but we're not here to satisfy the world it's to satisfy our Creator to be in, in, in good standing before him so that we too could say Jah we made it we're in the land isn't this so cool we made it you know so you know it's it's up for considerations now why did that have to do with um Balaam because of the doctrine because works 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 that don't mean nothing because the doctrine's all messed up it doesn't matter what we do we and it's not to say that that faith is without works but works without a foundation is just you know it could be anything oh yeah you know let's 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 do something stupid in the name of Rastafari if you don't have a doctrine a standing then you'll fall for anything so first we need to know this is what is so that whatever we do whatever we put our hands to then it would be a clean work so now going forward now on to the psychology of the matter and this is where where one should um, pay more attention concerning all of this so now perhaps 
it's best to begin saying by halal Hashem. Halal Hashem. That means, you know, the, the profane, the, the name. Now, the name Shem, the name, the authority, the elect, the chosen. So not only the name, but the name is the named. So you have name, N-A-M-E, and you have the named, N-A-M-E-D. It's the same, because if we're his body, represented, or, or um, the tool through the which his head, which he has established, which is not our head, but it is Christ as I my head. You know, I kind of said that all. So now, okay, we're the body, and we've been granted a head. We chose that head because we had no choice, because our head is not to be reverence is his head so even our king of kings being Rastafari he gave up the title Ras and handed that to his son Jesus Christos in whom he is well satisfied as a check and balance system a protection so that whatever we do on earth is the will which is in heaven which has been manifested through his son Jesus Christos our black lord and savior Yeshua HaMashiach and so and so that is our head and our authority is on the seat of King David through the son of Solomon, mainly first in Ethiopia. So that is our authority. That is our seat of rulership. And Christ is in our head. So we are the body. And if the body is constituted by many members that form that body, and the body is a representation of the elect or of the Hashem, the name, then the body is just as much the name as the name. Thus we say the named, the chosen, the called, the elect, and the name. There's no separation. It is one and the same. So, Khalal Hashem, you do not profane the name of the named. Thus, we will see this truth laid out very clearly throughout the whole scripture. It's full of sins that could be attributed to I and I as his people from, from the very beginning. But that's the part that we choose not to see. Because we're not in, in, in the light of the matter. We're no, we have not become fully light beings. There's, the Bible is full, full of sins that can be attributed to every saint that is named. From the, from the most recognized to the very least. Because we are all in the flesh and we all fall short. But the rule applies thou shalt not take the name of thy God in vain thou shalt not profane the name of thy God so halal Hashem that's a rule established Jah don't pin it on nobody Jah just kind of makes it sound like 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 um, nothing happened because he is true to his own name and his name is his people so uh, keep that in mind and that's one of the most difficult things that ones have a difficult time receiving when I and I call, call out the many sins that are very obvious but are not directly you know written they're not like word by word just, just pointed out so ones you know being double minded we choose to pretend that no 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 it, 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 there's something wrong with that because it doesn't say it directly. No, there's something wrong with I nine not wanting to change because then that means that we would have to accept the things not seen, not only the good things, but also the bad things. And then that is an expression of I nine self and then we would have to actually go into ourselves and make changes. And that's too difficult for some of us. But you know, grace and mercy abide there. It, you know, the changes come with time. It's not gonna be immediate if we've been living a hell of a life for 30 years you know it's going to take more than a couple of days to make some changes that otherwise would be probably to our um, detriment you know that's why slowly little by little and, and plus I mean you know every action every physical action will have a consequence you know it that that's that's it that's just the law of nature but I'm here to testify his truth not my behavior I'm not here to, ex I'm not talking about the flesh. The flesh, I'm just as bad as anyone or worse. Why? Because I knowing more and worse. In the sense that knowing more and, and I, I'm still the same, then I'm worse than the world. But that's not the part that I and I is exalting. That's the part that I and I is at conflict with. It's that simple. It's not ever going to end. It's, it's, 
the growth process is what makes us continue growing, you know, the difficulties. So that is a blessing. The difficulties is a blessing. The sins that we have committed, if you learn from them, then they were necessary. We can find justification in our errors when we decide to correct them because then that was necessary. I had to go through that to get me to this very point right now. And then we make a sacrifice, we sacrifice the animalistic nature of ourselves and keep it going. And we still have many, many more animals that we have to tame and overcome. So that is a conflict that will not end because that is enmity based on the nature of the body which is contrary to the will of the spirit. So if one's think that things are difficult to receive because of that psychology issue, that enmity, then, you know, like, uh, we really can't do anything about it, but we could speak truth and we could say, you know, let it go. It's not what John's like, to, like, like, um, asking from you. He's asking first to receive him. He is true. And then everything else, you know, once you, once you agree with everything that he is and testify that I won't, I won't, I mean, he's, he's true from, from the beginning to the end, revealed from the end, the beginning, then, you know, you, you have, you have the rest of eternity to fix up some of that other stuff that we got to work on but first we need to testify that we are false that we are wrong that we are the problem then only then can we accept that he is true he is right he's the solution and from then we can begin you know so now the reason we said halal Hashem is because of this issue right here just to add to the whole to this um to this uh, presentation we could call it um, we can utilize shalach lakha. I'm not no, I didn't say it like shalach lakhe or lakha. Doesn't matter, you know. Um, that Torah study or you know that Shabbat study. And I'm not quite sure which one it is. Let me see if I if I have here in my notes. Um, might as well bring forth uh, some some information uh, concerning you know what we're speaking about. Let's see. I'm pretty sure it's, I studied this. It's been recent. Oh, um, Shelach Lecha. Um, Rastafar Sabbatical Study Number Thirty Seven. If I'm not mistaken, I think that one belonged to to the Shabbat of um, July first uh, to the second, two thousand sixteen. Now that Shabbat study begins with um, the the book of um, Orit Zechilka which is um, Bamidbar, which is the book of Numbers, with the chapter, it begins with chapter 13, verse 1. And um, this is where the, why it is necessary to, uh, to understand the Chalal Hashem, you know, uh, the, that rule, that command, that word. See, see here. Uh, the study would begin something to the effect, and the Lord spake to Moses, saying, Send thou men, that they may search the land of Canaan, which I give to the children of Israel, of every tribe of their fathers, shall ye send a man, every one a ruler among them. And Moses, by the command of, of the Lord, sent them from the wilderness of Paran. All the men, all those men were heads of, ch of the children of Israel. And I'm going to just um, uh, skip on to verse 16. And these are the names of the which Moses sent to spy out the land. Uh, skip um, that last part. And, and Moses sent them to spy out the land of Canaan and said to them, Get you up this way southward and go up into the into the mountain. And it it's it's necessary to read this part. And see the land, what it is. See the land, what it is. And the people that dwell it therein, whether they be strong or weak, few or many. And what the land and what the land is that they dwell in, whether it be good or bad. And what cities they be that they dwell in, whether in tents or in strongholds. And what the land is, whether it be fat or lean, whether there be wood therein or not. And be ye of a good courage. So anyways, that's enough. So notice all the, all the things that ones are supposed to tour or spy on. Notice. They're all excuses that we have created if we step into the light and receive the fullness. Knowing that we are not, the we are not, you know, like um, perfect, but He is. So, and only when we accept the fullness of truth, 
then we can actually make corrections because you know like if, if, if we're not sick how can how can he be our healer you know if we're not if we're not hungry if we're full how can how can he he provide bread for us you know if we don't thirst how could we drink from his water that he offers it says it, it's it's you know on that basis on that line of reasoning so now what we're going to make mention is um the psychology of this whole matter halal hashem we don't need like Jesus Christus, I'm, I don't know exactly where, I don't remember, but I do recall a point in time in which he says something to the effect, you got Moses to rat you out, or, or you know, you got Moses to accuse you. What does that mean? This is what it means. That John never intended to send no one. This is our doing. This is our, you know, like, the brightness. Our correcting John, because John don't ever know what he's doing. We know what John should do. We tell him the ways that will work for us, and that's the problem. So now, going forward to watch, this is this is what's going to reveal that. So we go forward on to um, the book of uh, Deuteronomy, and there, we're going to just um, cite or reference two verses in particular. So the book of Numbers, I mean the book of Deuteronomy, chapter, let's see, what I say, chapter 1, verse 22, if I'm not mistaken, yeah, that's correct. So now we go forward and it reads, And ye came to me. My bad. It says, And ye came near to me, every one of you, and said, We will send men before us. See, this is Moses accusing the brethren. This is Moses ratting them out. It's not Jesus Christos. Y'all have Moses to, you know, to accuse you. So now it, it says, um, and just to add to the Stephen Stephanos is who accused Abraham of some stuff you know he rats them out too you know in chapter 7 of the books of Acts of the Apostles so now and ye came near to me every one of you and said we will send men before us and they shall search us out the land and bring us word again by what way we must go up and into what cities we shall come so now this is the fullness of the matter See, Jah won't say that because Jah is true to his word. He's not going to profane his own name. He's, he's not going to make his name and use his name in, in vain. Moses, on the other hand, you know, <laughs> he's just a man. So Moses, you know, y'all are the problem. But Moses himself is the problem because he, him being leader, everything else is a reflection of him, like life is. So everything that is going wrong in your life, you are responsible for it. I had to learn that, and now guess what? I have close to no problems in my life, because the minute I have a problem, I have to take a second to be like, you're the problem. Figure it out. There's a distortion in heaven. The interpretation is false. You're being, you are being um, deceived by the sen sensual nature of man. Fix it. You cannot fix it attacking the flesh, you must go to heaven and you must figure out the circumstance or the opportunity or the necessity, the responsibility that is afforded to you through the scenario, circumstance, um, environment, experience, you know, situation, whatever it be. What it is that I got to learn, what it is that I got to overcome, what am I doing wrong, how am I, how am I um, disobeying Jah, how am I going astray from Jah, that's the truth people don't got nothing to do with it if you attack the people then you are creating more problems to yourself it's not a, a war against the flesh it's a reordering or ordering properly the lights even you know set thou, set them set set thee thou the lights in order so arrange the heavens and then the flesh will automatically be changed instantaneously without adding to the to anything without creating more problems for yourself instead of fixing them so we is a spiritual people we do not fix things warring against flesh we create problems that way it's a distortion in heaven that must be rightly or yeah rightly divided and corrected so now uh the book of Deuteronomy chapter 9 um, verse let's see what was it it's a uh, verse 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 uh, 23 
this one reads actually wrong page going forward it reads um likewise when the Lord sent you from Kadesh Barnea saying go up and possess the land which I have given you then you rebelled against the commandment of the Lord your God and ye believed him not nor hearkened to his voice ye have been rebellious against the Lord from the day that he uh, that I knew you so now just using that uh, now let's let's go forward to the book of Numbers chapter 13 what do we what does this have to do with Caleb what is well Caleb and Joshua are the only two ones individuals that were 20 years of, of age or older that ex that exodus from Egypt in that original exodus because these two were of a different spirit everyone else died in the wilderness and that's to say only those that were 20 years of age or older now what does this have to do with the psychology what does this have to do with the psychology more correctly how can I tie it up um, I kind of like jumped around and, and lost track as to what I was going to bring forth so hmm. anyways let's add let's use this as a basis to kind of illuminate what then we're going to go into let's go in let's go to we're gonna we're still gonna stay in the book of numbers but we we seeking to go forward to to um the situation with moab uh, numbers 22 numbers 22 chapter um chapter 22 of the book of numbers verse 4 want to check this out this is this is um gonna be good so that we could set up like uh the next move so basically it says he sent messenger no that's verse 5 and Moab said to the elders of Midian, Now shall this company lick up all that that are round about us, as the ox licketh up the grass of the field. And Balak, the son of Zippor, was king of the Moabites at that time. Why would they say that? Why would Moab, or why would um, Moab said, so when it says Moab, I guess it's saying Balak, the son of Zippor, because he's the representative of um, of the Moabites in that time. He, Baruch Hashem, you know, blessed be the authority, and all authority is granted to I. I just seen right now that that that's the that's the evidence to which I I wasn't able to bring forth before. Um, here's the problem: when Israel uh, wars against the flesh, we condemn the world. We are not supposed to do that because we are spiritual beings. We affect the heavens directly. We've said this before. I don't know if in English we, we're trying this to begin to get forward, like uh, to bring forth more in English and, and LOJ Society better watch these videos and listen because this is stuff that I have not heard. And it doesn't matter if, if it has not been heard. The necessity of it being heard is the difference between the changes that are very practical, very simple, and very much necessary. These things are what, what are going to change our conduct to the good. So it is very extremely important that we overstand these principles because the, the lines of the world are according to the children of Israel and that means we affect creation itself we could do good but because we're spiritual beings we could do the worst so the 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 world in itself is a reflection of our failure now this takes faith to receive so many ones will probably think like that's stupid then you're not Israel but you should really consider and I consider accept that the words that I'm saying are as true as the as truth we are the world we are the representation of the world if the world is effed up it's because we are effed up it's that simple it's very simple as a matter of fact now's that time we are the star but that's another teaching which is very much necessary as well um, okay what was I trying to say with the world people Normal people, they got representatives. Notice how it said, um, notice how it said here, um, and Moab said to the elders of Midian. Why would it say Moab? Moab was an was, uh, entity like that has passed long before. It's referring to 
And Balak, the son of Zippor, was king of the Moabites at that time. So, so Balak, the son of Zippor, is the representation of the Moabites. He is Moab at that time. He is the spiritual figure, the head of the Moabites. That means that his actions affect the heavens, not the people. The people have no connect to the heavens. These people, which are normal people, they got representatives that they go to. And the representative is the, the ultimate outcome of, of how the heavens get affected. We as a people, we affect heaven directly. We don't need to go to no one. Our actions affect heaven. So that's the difference. Um, our behavior has to be right and exact. Our behavior, our testimony has to be true and faithful. As to other people, it won't really make that much of a difference until their spiritual heads, their leaders, um, distort the heavenly, um, uh, you know, uh, the heaven, distort the heavenlies with their their witness. But we individually, because we are all to be um, a priestly nation, we are all endowed with the rod that connects heaven to earth, that the will in heaven be made manifest on earth which is very different from normal people they could they have no fault in them there's no fault you know forgive them they don't know what they're doing they really don't we should know so we're the problem now using that as a basis but going back to what I and I were going forward to what I and I was trying to say why would Moab say that you know these people is going to lick up all that's round about us like the ox look at up the grass of the field because we see ourselves in everything. As soon as we say something negative about something else, that's a reflection of the self. Why would you think that? If you're not thinking about stealing because you're not a robber, because you're not a thief, then if you see someone walking by, why would you consider him a thief? Oh, you know, you start you start grabbing your purse if you're a woman because you see a person that identifies, where a person that you can prejudge to, to be whatever you want him to be. And then you start, you know, grabbing your purse and you hold your children tightly close to you and you say lock the doors lock the doors or whatever you know here comes that that person he's a robber he's a thief he's a no you are why would you consider that about him that's on your mind most people in some cases you know and you know I, I understand that the world is very much distorted but then again what's the problem is it not the thought of the man before the the the, the problem actually manifests well, that's the order of things, you know. First, you know, it's a, it's a thought, and then it's expressed, you know, it's vocalized, and then, you know, you, you make, you open way for, for, for a possibility. And normal people, that's more difficult. They got to have thousands of people on the same page. Us, it's each and every one of us, that's the difference. If we think like that, we man we create that on the spot. It may not materialize right in front of you. Why should it? Space and time is distorted. But it has anywhere else. So when an Israelite is thinking stupid stuff like that, evils are being manifested. Because we have been given authority over creation, so we're creating evil. Other people, they need a whole gang. They need thousands of people to create, you know, like evil. Because they're, they're, they're not entitled with the authority that Adam was granted with. Consider that. So now, still, on a, on a very, let's not get too ahead of ourselves, but it's true. It's, it's best that ones begin to just accept it. Or, or you know, or just kind of say like, well, you know what, Rastafari is not for me. That would be a good call because you messing around with people's souls, and that's worse. Rather accept that, you know what, that's maybe, no, that's not me. I don't want nothing to do with that. That actually, that actually might get you into it because, you know, that's true. At least you're faithful in that. You you understand. You recognize. Ja, ja kind of, you know, he has a thing for once being just sincere. As to being a hypocrite and getting yourself into more problems, you're, you're not making any kind of like um, heavenly, um, you're not, you know, you're not establishing any good heavenly relationships. Let's, let's put it that way. So now, when I say, oh, it was probably him that did that. Why? Because I'm thinking about myself and I'm expressing it 
I'm expressing an inner thought outwardly. Why? Why should anyone have done it? Why can't I think? Why can't I think life? Why can't I just? Why must I accuse someone if I have no evidence to sustain that claim? I'm the wicked one. So on that basis, we could utilize this verse to be like, why would Moab think that? Israel, Israel is on a different page. They should be. So why would Moab think that? Because of his nature. Now, why does Moab even exist? Because Israel, see how it all ties into Israel? It is Moab, Moabites, are a product of our failure as spiritual beings to, to give obedience to our Creator. It's that simple, but one can't receive that because then you have to accept the truth of the matter. Moabites are the product of Abraham's failure to be faithful. Now, why is that so? Because John said, cut your behind, circumcise yourself from all the flesh, not what you pick and choose to be what I, what I said, cut yourself away from. Disinherit your nature, your human nature, and follow me. So what do he do? He picked, you know, he he got his dad. He got his, he got you know his woman, which that was fine. But then he brought along Lot, probably because he felt sorry for him, because he felt responsible. Lot was his brother's son. His brother died. You know, he loved his dad. He didn't want to let go of his dad, of his idolatrous dad. So that had him selling idols. So what do they do? They don't go to the promised land. They go to Haran. They dwell and waste time. So. John probably like oh boy but I'm, uh, must I kill your father for you to for you to not have anything to hold on to okay your dad's dead so then Terah you know he dies and then Abraham's like oh, okay yeah, I guess you know I'm, I'm done with the flesh I'll just go to the promised land yeah because you got no choice anymore because you've been predestined and John fixed it up so that you wouldn't have a choice but you still brought a lot a long lot and that's the problem if you notice it's not until he separated from lot that then Jah's like, oh, now that I forced you to separate from Jah, from Lot, I mean, now that, because you didn't, because you just as disobedient as you were in the beginning. When I said, circumcise yourself from all flesh, you brought along Lot, you went with your father to Haran, you wasted time, you know, you brought along all the, all the souls that you gained, and which is not to your, to your um, benefit, you know. So what happens? Jah has to put enmity in the, I guess like in the pastors or whatever, in the herdsmen of, of um, Abram and of Lot so that they be striving or contending one from another to the point where Abram has to come and be like, Lot, listen, we'll do this, listen, we don't have to be fighting, the land is plenty, is big enough for both of us, um, pick a side, you pick the left, I'll go to the right, you pick the right, I'll go to the left, you know, go to the east, I'll go to the west take the take you know take the west I'll go to the east and so that's what happened and what a lot do he chose the benefit the rich area you know the 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 place that was watered like the garden was watered you know the 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 because he's a representation of himself of wanting to hold on to he's a representation of um of uh well he's a product of, of Abram Abram's failure to let go of the flesh but then he is a, a representation of himself of trying to be like, okay, I'll be a little bit spiritual, but I'll get all the benefits from it and still be worldly because I love the world, but I can't deny that there's power in the, in the spirit. So I want both, you know, but, but I love the riches of the world and I don't want to give them up, but I got to be a little bit spiritual. So I got to, you know, that's the difference. Lot and Abraham lived the same experience, but Lot was always after the worldly things, which is, you know, um, uh, you know, Tayatera or Tayatera. In, in the book of um, Revelations, the church, you know, Je Jezebel, I think, and, and Balaam, but the doctrines, all that kind of stuff is in there, which is what we are confronted with right now as the Lion of Judah society. All that BS, just trying to view the world instead of recognizing what we really are. We are Mashiach in the flesh, and we should do that. There's a lot to say about that, but um, uh, we, we'll keep that for, for on the forward because that in itself is like a lot of information that ones have to receive. No going forward with this what are we trying to say so until John forced the situation to the point where okay Abraham was like okay we got a split we got a split once the split was done John was like okay now can I continue on with my blessings now that I forced you to separate from what I told you to separate from from the beginning now can I so what happens um you know lag is into trouble Abraham goes and saves him is he making friends? No, he's not. He's making enemies. Even though everything goes out to the best because he's blessed, 
but still he's, he's creating the situations that we are confronted with today because people in the world are not liking him. Why? Because he's getting away with all the BS that he is causing. The rest of the world is like, listen, we was just here. This dude came. He lying, saying that this was his, his sister. His sister's cute. And I figured, you know, we could hook up or whatever. Turns out this dude's a prophet. This dude's like a beloved of the Most High. What, where am I? I? I didn't know the dude came here lying. You know, like, so now we all plague. Now I got to give him all kinds of riches. Now I got to, like, provide for him all kinds of things. So our mistakes don't make any friends in the world. So we're not, we're not Israel. We're not, like, um, we're not being, uh, finding favor amongst the flesh. Although in the heights and in, in the heavens, you know, just because of the promise, then we still, we still, like, in good, um, in good, not standing, but, like, uh, you know, it, they'll bear with us. You know, Jah will bear with us. So anyways, what I'm trying to say that that Moab is a product of Abraham, just like all the difficulties in the world are a product of us, Rastafari. And that's got to be accepted, no way around it. And so, now, where was I going with that? Uh, so, what's the problem? Uh, Moabites, concerning the Moabites. Oh, well, Lot eventually gave birth to, um, to, uh, uh, to the, what is it? To, um... Amun and Moab and actually his daughters did an okay thing in the sense that I used to think that it was like a, like a straight up heathenish but they kind of canceled the situation from getting worse in the sense that there's no one else around here I used to think that they were stupid that they couldn't realize that there was more or you know what that's an expression of lot they can't see beyond that they have to please the flesh the flesh but through the woman coming salvation you know Baruch Hashem blessed be the authority and the name which is I not because um I just seen right now how how it that's the way that Jai kind of like made that less of a problem because if they would have mixed with another seed um from what uh, from outside of the mount their own it would have gotten way worse so Jai used Mo, um, lots of stupidity that he couldn't see beyond his own personal interest to shelter his daughter's um, point of view and be like oh there's no one else in the world everyone's gone you know like it's been an apocalypse now how are we going to preserve seed so it, it forced that their own um, like uh, their own limitations was used against himself in that his daughters went into himself and so that kept the problem from being less of a problem you know, and there's more that that Ina is receiving concerning that, but that's not even the point. We got to go forward to um. We were just trying to state the fact that whenever you accusing people of something, that's because that's you. Why would you be thinking about about? Um, for example, and this is a bad example. People are gonna probably think that's kind of you know it sounds crazy or whatever, but but it's just an example. Like if someone's saying like, oh, that person looks like he's gonna rape someone. Who is you thinking about rape? I mean that person. Why? Because he looks a certain way? I mean, who's, who's even, why are you even considering that person? He's just standing there. Why would you say that? Unless something within you is kind of like trying to manifest something or I don't know. Like, what's wrong with you? But we so distorted, we so messed up that we'd probably be like, oh yeah, you're right. Because look, because he's wearing, he's wearing Levi jeans or something. Something so stupid like that. So now, but, but really, we should consider like, maybe I shouldn't talk to you. Why would he say that? What does that have anything to do with anything? Because of a way that he looks? He's going to rape someone because he looks a certain way? Or Moab said the same thing. Oh, there's these people. And they, they're going to lick up all that. Why? Because you like that. You're like that. And if you want to, you know, once could build a, a case concerning, well, you know, the Israelites destroyed certain people. Well, there, there's a fullness to the matter. Did he investigate the matter? Did he know what was going on? Maybe he, sh he should have, so he could have learned, hey, if these people ask you, let me go by, let them go by. Because the last two nations that did not let them go by, they all dead. So, you know, like, investigate the matter. So anyways, going forward. Um, this, uh, man, we got like six minutes before this thing shuts off. This is why we don't do teachings in English, because, it, you know, like... This is how it goes. I'd like to stay here for hours, but then we have a lot to do in Spanish, too. So, Book of Numbers. The Book of Numbers. Whose fault is it? Who's setting up the failure? It's us. 
because we don't believe John said go possess the land we said no 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 Moses Moses hold up you know if John don't know what the F he's doing no 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 that, that's not what we're gonna do Moses this is what we're gonna do because John don't know what he's doing watch it's this is what we're gonna set up we gonna pick men and then we're gonna send them and then they're gonna scout out the land and then they, they're gonna bring back a, a report of their tour and then we're gonna go to the land Moses is, pro is probably just like oh, these idiots Ja um, oh and then they added to that and you're gonna tell Ja that we told you that his ideas just don't work that you know he you know he's he's um he thinks he knows a lot but but we know better so go tell him Moses. So Moses, you know, they said that they ain't gonna go into the land. Jah's like, all right, that's cool. Um, then you know, do as they say. So Moses, okay, we're gonna send him in. So when the men bring back negative reports, you know that list that we that we mentioned concerning what Moses says. Uh, you're gonna look for this. You're gonna look for this. You're gonna look for this. They're all excuses. Basically, Moses was, um, uh, you know, vocalizing their inner thoughts. You're gonna you're gonna look for this excuse so what I'm saying you're gonna say the opposite you're gonna look for this excuse so what I'm saying you're gonna bring back the opposite report because it's not about the land you know what the land is it's about you not wanting to give up your giant stature and that's where Khaled, little Khaled being a small little dog like this had a big heart you know what does it say it's not the size of the dog in the fight it's the size of the fight in the dog well it's kinda of true everything else is a reflection of the self and it's the refusal to pick up your cross, die daily, and live a spiritual life in which it's not about you. You become a little a little chihuahua like this, like Caleb, and say like, Ja, we made it. We made it to the land. Yeah, I know we made it. I told you we were going to make it. Oh, yeah, you're right. Yeah, that's why I followed you. It would have been very, very, very simple, very, you know, whatever comes forth. It would have came forth. Ja would have provided. Sacrifices would have had to have been made. That's fine. But when you make a plan... In some cases, you're just making excuses. Well, we don't have enough resources. Well, we don't have this. Well, we don't have that. No, what you don't have is faith. We're not like the other people. Our God says something, you better believe it. But no, we don't believe. So we make up, well, let's go check just in case the land is really worth it. No, it's excuses. You're setting yourself up for failure. So what happens? They send the people, they go into the land, yeah, the land is all right and stuff like that, but blah, 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 and they start bringing up excuses. And then, here comes the psychology of the matter. You got a couple minutes. Um, then, the, the negative report that they bring forth is a reflection of what they don't want to let go. And, and it's, it's just what it is. Check it out. Let's see. Let's see if we can find that real quick. Um, let's see. Uh... And they brought up an evil report of the land which they had searched of to the children of Israel, saying, The land through which we have gone to search it is a land that eat it up the inhabitants thereof. No, you want to eat up the inhabitants. And if you go into the promised land, you won't be able to eat up your enemies. You're the wicked one that don't want to give up that. So you reflect it upon the ones there. Who cares? The land don't eat up their inhabitants. You're the type of person that wants to eat up your neighbors, your family. You're, you want to eat up everyone. That's the problem. And so going on, it says, and all the people that 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 um, we saw in it are men of great stature. No, you think you all that. You think you're a giant. You think you're the most important thing in the world. Do you think the world revolves around you? It could if you were Israel, but then you have to serve the world. Because whoever in Israel is, is the best has to be the worst, has to be the least. So that's their position, and they don't want to give that up because it's self worship. They love themselves. They want to be giants. They want to eat up the land. They want to, you know, this, this, and that. And there we saw the giants, the sons of God. No, they saw themselves. Oh, we want to be like them. If we go into the land, we can't because then we got to serve John. And John know that I and I is not going to humble ourselves. That's the last thing we want. We don't want to pick up our cross die daily and follow him we want to do our own thing and so we we were in our own sights as grasshoppers knowing your own sights you know you're giants that's why you say that they saw you as grasshoppers so anyways going forward and and the psychology keeps escalating then the congregation lifted up their voices and then they cried so they lifted up their voices and then it, it you know it developed into crying and then it got to the point where they got depressed and they're all like you know what nah you know what let's set up a capital let's go back because this land means that it's true change, it's a change of heart, change of mind, it's a true, it's a true um, reformation, it's a correction, it's a, nah, 
I like I like being wicked. So no. And so sometimes it's best to be a small colleague and have a big heart for Jah. Because when you think you're too much, you don't want to give it up, you know. So but thinking to be poor, you're wretched. You know, thinking to be rich, you're wretched, poor. Shalom, this thing's going to turn out. 